definitely. But you're tuned into the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam. And I want to jump over here to this next door because we were told earlier, Sam, man, that TMZ personality Van Lathan has been fired after getting into a nasty confrontation with fellow star Michael Babcock. Now, sources say that Lathan confronted Babcock in the newsroom and he told him, this is according to sources, that he will be in trouble if he ever embarrassed Lathan again. Now, insiders say that Lathan met with the site's attorneys and he was suspended, but a few days later that he was dismissed from TMZ. Now, we know that Van Lathan is the host of the Red Pill podcast. And I, like I was telling Sam, man, as soon as I seen this, I'm like, man, I keep going back to the interview with him and Dame Dash where they were mm-hmm. talking about working with somebody in ownership and entrepreneurship. But um, Sam, man, what do you think about this? One of the pillars of TMZ. Van Lathan being fired, man, for just the argument with another employee. Hey, man, that's a blessing in disguise. But before I say that, he he dropped something on Twitter last night. He said, it's looking like tomorrow's going to suck. We good up there, God? Okay, cool. Just checking. So I don't know if that was him knowing what was about to go down. You Like you said, one of the pillars. I know that uh, the reason why a lot of black folk were watching TMZ was because of him. And it was kind of like I equated to Tiger Woods playing golf. Okay, cool. He's playing golf. We're going to watch his brother go ahead and dominate and win whether he's really black or not. I don't know. Uh, Van Lathan was a, a great voice for black people on TMZ, but we all had our questions on why you even needed to be there because you were just such a, a, a prominent role in there. You could take that in the day and age where you can make your own shit and win. You had the Red Pill podcast yeah, that was yeah. doing this thing that was winning, but like you said, Dame Dash had that conversation with him, and it had to resonate when we heard he got fired. It's not surprising. No. They cracked the whip on him. Um, <laughs> And I would love to hear what he has to say about it now. Yeah, and we don't have the particular details. I'm sure the details of what exactly, you know, the argument was about. Now, they're saying pretty much, you know, allegedly that pretty much Van Lathan pretty much threatened him. You know what I mean? Pretty much saying, you know, so, um, again, if you got your own company, your own business, you can't be fired. That's what Dame Dash was trying to tell you. You know, ultimately, like, um, this type of situations could happen. We know that working at jobs and whatnot no matter how much you knew the boss, his family and whatnot, that you are expendable. If you say the wrong thing, if you make the wrong move, you're out of here. When you own your own business, you ain't got to worry about that. You have other things to worry about, obviously. You have to keep the business going, keep the money coming in and all that. But one thing you don't have to worry about is somebody saying you're fired. So like you said, Sam, man, blessing in disguise. He don't need TMZ no more. He should have been doing five, ten years ago. Van Lathan should have been doing his own thing. He would have been reaping more benefits. You know, I think that when you look at that interview between him and Dame Dash, he was kind of, you know, stuck on a nipple a little bit. He didn't want to get off the nipple. And it's hard, you know, that we come up with this mentality that we need to get a job and work for people. It ain't easy to step out there and be your own boss and be accountable. When you come into TMZ, everything's set up for you. You know what I mean? You come in and, you know, things are ready. You probably got caught pe- uh, people in the background working for you. you got to do is probably, you know, um, talk at this point. I'm right. sure he worked his way up to that. But it's a difference when, you know, you got to do the cameras. You got to do the editing. You got to do everything, you know, behind the scenes yourself to put the product out there. It's a different pride that you're going to take in something like that. But, um, so you know, we understand that because, we you know, we self-made. We put this thing together here, us on the cameras, us editing, us marketing, us doing every single aspect of the business so we can definitely appreciate you know it more but again the biggest thing i could say from him he's only going to get bigger and better from this period you would think that at a place like that i I agree with everything you said oh god kind of jump gears and talk about tmz real quick and this firing you would think that at a place like that because i can just kind of look at news places and and magazine places you told a line a lot and you can see these heated kind of arguments happening from time to time for mm-hmm. him to say, if you embarrass me like that again, I, and he didn't even say, I'm gonna kick your ass, but you know, he went there. You already obviously know where, what lines he was kind of going between when he said that, mm-hmm. why that would render them making the decision to let him go is kind of crazy to me. You suspend him. All right, cool. Look, man, don't say that no more. You can't do that. Does that kind of reflect on the day and age we are in with the, the sensitivity? Because if this would have been said in the 90s, I don't think somebody would have got fired for it, especially in a place like TMZ where you know there's some heated arguments and discussions going on back and forth right. the way they told lines. So yeah, I don't know if there was a – do you, or do you think – let me ask you, was there an agenda out for 
a Van Lathe. And even though we don't know the place too well, we know Harvey and the couple of the, the, the partners and play, pieces in place, but we don't know too much about a team. Right. They like the lion shit too. Yeah. Do you think it was a, a ploy on TMZ's part to get him eventually up out of there? Maybe because his name was getting too big or this. What, what, just, what are you I, thinking I, on that? I mean, honestly, I, I think that it's smoke and mirrors. And I just think that, um, that it was planned by him and TMZ to make this thing happen. So he could just, Create a controversy, I guess, real quick to get him hot and to separate. To be honest, to publicity. be yeah, publicity. You know, is what they do as media. They put it together. All right, you get out of here now. We'll make this story, and now everybody's going to the Red Pill Podcast now. And you know, you're gonna get millions of people to jump over there to you now. Severance package. Still love you, Harvey. I can't see him saying having a relationship that he had with Harvey and TMZ. From what we see, it could have been totally different. What we see, one argument. Or him even threatening, he could have punched the dude. Mm -hmm. He still shouldn't be, you know, fired from that job. I think it was um, something that was agreed on by by both, um, you know, TMZ and Van Lathan, To be honest, oh God confirms it or or speculates it's a publicity stunt. Which makes sense. Why not? Yeah, why not? It's yeah. TMZ, right? They know how to create a story, and they don't care what's said and this and that. They know obviously the race car is going to get thrown. They know this. They know that. But with, at the end of the day, it's going to cause attention. And like you said, if he starts saying, "Come here, let's talk about this, that, 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 that," it's going bring major attention over there maybe the contract expired maybe this may who knows right right what happened behind the scenes and they may just wanted to put a show on with him going out right. maybe it's a little more to the story or something was more serious we don't know what homeboy said for him to to get that response from van lathan to say you'd be you know what i mean if you'd be trouble if you ever embarrass me like that again but right maybe we'll firm find out more in the meantime blessing in disguise van lathan do your own thing bro Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to um switch gears, Sam, man, from the stories that we had. Cause I got a story here that's breaking, that's coming through here, and I okay. just want to play the audio to it. Um, the headline reads: WAC One Hundred condones Eric Holder for killing Nipsey." Let's check this out here. Seems like he says something going against Nipsey. This is coming right through now. Let's see. And, uh, and what up? It's a harsh reality, but you stepping out of civilization. Into the jungle gangbang. Shitty Khan, the lead gun man, right? When it comes to the rules of engagement of gangbangers, he did what he was supposed to do when another gangbanger calls you a faggot, a pedophile, or a snitch. You supposed to handle your business. And can't nobody say that's wrong. Now, is it some people sad that it happened to who it happened to? Probably so. I'm going to call a spade a spade. You go playing football, Nick, you better show what the hell is. Anybody. You think when I go right now to the hood, So it might be a little bit more to that. Let me see if I can. Uh... Okay. And, I, and, and what up? And it, it, it's a harsh reality. He's stepping out of civilization into the jungle gangbang. Shitty cuz, the lead gun man, right? When it comes to the rules of engagement of gangbangers, he did what he was supposed to do when another gangbanger calls you a faggot, a pedophile, or a snitch. You're supposed to handle your business. And can't nobody say that's wrong. Now, is it some people sad that it happened to who it happened to? Probably so. I'm going to call a spade a spade. You go playing football, Nick, you better show what the hell is. Anybody. You think when I go right now to the hood? All right, so that's all we have right now. Um, I guess we'll, you know, we'll get some more of that audio now, but we'll deal with that that portion right there. I think is definitely enough to deal with. Sam, I'm going to let you go first, but the other day we were having a conversation about the game and the WAC 100, and you said this, he's a good marketer. Your thoughts? Is this good marketing? I don't know if this is a marketing ploy. I think that um, he's speaking some genuine shit to where they live in a culture that they live under when you look at in, in nipsey himself and when you listen to his lyrics a lot of it reflected on listen if i go out how i go out i'm good with what i did understanding how i live and yeah 